and welcome to the Astro Slide First Look events. This is the first of several events that we are planning for 2021 and we are delighted that you can join us for this opportunity to take the very first look at the Planet Computer's Astro Slide device hot off the press. Before we get going with a tour of the Astro Slide, let's introduce our guests for this session. They are Dr. Yanko Mersic Flogel, CEO of Planet Computers, David A. Greedy, CTO of Planet Computers, Martin Ridderford from Therefore Design, who is the designer of Astro Slide, as well as the iconic Scion PDAs of the 1990s, and Sebastian Nle, the industrial designer at Planet Computers. Today's programme will consist of a Q&A session with the panel, which will begin in a few minutes time. But first, Yanko, can you please take a few moments to showcase to us the Astro Slide device? Thank you, Chris. I'm delighted and honoured to show you for the very first time the Astro Slide 5G. So here it is. This is the phone uh, that we've all been waiting for. It's uh, a beautiful uh, design by Martin, which has been um, which has been now turned into reality. Um, I can show you around a little bit. The key thing, of course, is its form factor. So uh, the fact that we can slide this phone open, and hey presto, we have a fully working pocket computer PDA. Uh, it's really fantastic. Uh, we're delighted with the first sample. Uh, that's come really hot of the hot of the ODM uh, site uh, just a few days ago. So um, I want to go into some of the aesthetics of the device first. So this is the first form factor of its kind, uh, first device with this form factor. It is uh, literally a device that is a transformer, so it can transform between uh, a portrait mobile phone and a pocket computer with just a sliding action. Um, this is um, what the cornerstone of this device is, the fact that we can have both landscape and portrait in one device that fits in your pocket. As well as that, this is the first device with 5G and the keyboard. So this is the first device that actually has a keyboard and that can function on the 5G networks that are now sprouting up all over the world. So uh, I'll go into the specification later, but I just wanted to say I'm delighted to see uh, this device become a reality, and it's all because of your support. Thank you very much, Yanko, and very exciting and interesting to see uh, the Astro slide for the very first time in the flesh. Um, Martin, I would like to come to you now, if I may. The Astro slide obviously looks very different to both the Cosmo Communicator and Gemini PDA devices. Can you give us some of the thinking behind the design, please? Why move away, for example, from the clamshell concept to a more slide mechanism? And can you let us know a little bit more about how the slide mechanism works, perhaps without giving away anything uh, too <laughs> state secretive? <laughs> Sure. You, you say it's very different to what we did before, <clears throat> but actually when it's open, it's very similar. And that's really the key is that <clears throat> the, the form factor when the device is open is um, a very good one. So you've got a very big screen, a very big keyboard, sits very nicely in your hands, um, both in the air when you're using it, typing it in the air. And also when you put it down at a desk, it's nice and stable. All of those things everyone loves. You can type with your thumbs, et cetera, et cetera. So we wanted to keep with that. And the notion that we have um, a device which is split into two, one half is all keyboard, the other half is all display, is a really vital part of what we've been trying to achieve. So in the previous devices, Gemini and Cosmo, we, as you say, use the book format in order to um, open the device up, much like a laptop. Um, so basically the keyboard um, is protected by the display when it's shut. All of that makes sense, 
apart from um, when you have a device in your pocket and everyone is now used to smartphones with the large screen on the outside. <clears throat> so we wanted to update that um, initial um, usability um, rather than having everything hidden on the inside uh, and then opening up um, um, for um, um, use. We wanted to have it usable when it's shut as well. Um, and obviously everyone is used to using a smartphone these days. And smartphones are generally used in portrait. Um, and obviously you can use it in landscape, but uh, essentially they're set up for one hand use. And that's where um, the Cosmo and uh, Gemini fell down is that they weren't very good at one handed use. Um, so this can do everything that a smartphone can do when it's shut. But then when you open it up, it can do everything that a laptop can do. So it's a classic one plus one equals three. Um, and um, we think it's a huge step forward for this genre of product um, because um, the usability is just how extraordinary in both um, guises. So um, Yanko and I discussed this um, development a while ago. Um, and we always rejected it because it was too difficult. Um, because if you want to have all keyboard and all display in one element, how the hell do they join together and how do they slide over each other? So uh, after much soul searching, <laughs> um, I found a way of doing it. And it's based on the way that um, some drawer systems work where you can pull a drawer out um, on runners and it, there's a third part to the runner, which basically allows you to draw the, 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 uh, the, the drawer out fully. So we've used this third part to join the, the two elements together. And the third part is um, doing, a, doing a lot because it actually carries um, the flexible cables that join the two halves together as well. So <clears throat> it's um, a tour de force of miniaturization to get um, the um, usability and the mechanics working together in harmony. Thank you very much indeed. I love the idea that next time I go to my uh, sock drawer, I can uh, it can remind me of uh, the mechanism <laughs> that's being used within uh, within Astro Slide as well. Um, now, Yanko, just throwing back to you for a moment, you mentioned a moment or two ago that you would run through the specification. I think that'll be of a lot of interest uh, to uh, Astro Slide backers. So, um, can you give us the highlights there? Yes, so I'll, I'll go into the I'll go into the spec and I'll try and show a few things. So firstly, um, here we can see the screen. Um, we now have a revised um, spec for the screen. It's a 6.39 inch AMOLED display. The color is excellent on the display, so we're very happy about uh, the display, the uh, in sunlight vision, and basically. The the, uh, the the contrast that it's that it's creating it's actually really really great and you'll see a, a wonderful display. Um, one of the things about the display and we had some questions about uh, it's a slightly smaller display than was initially indicated. Uh, we actually chose another display to start with. Um, the whole unit, you know, there's a the whole unit is. Uh, um, all the parts need to come together, right? So uh, every part kind of links to all other parts. The, the reason why we chose this display is don't forget we have quite a low volume production and um, we needed to modify it because of our wonderful hinge that Martin designed and the way that the device opens. Um, we needed to find a way to fit the, um, the touch panel chips and the flexible um, the flexible cable that goes from the display onto the main PCB without accessing the area and without constraining the, the hinge, right? So uh, this manufacturer um, agreed uh, to modify their design of, for their screen. So it's a custom-made display for us with a custom-made touch panel for us uh, cable that connects to the motherboard. So as I said, wonderful um, 6.39 inch display. As you can see, it goes uh, very close to the edges so the bezel on the on the longer sides of the device is um, quite thin. 
and uh, it's practically non-existent when you open the device as well. So if I open the device, you can see that the uh, it sits uh, very well uh, close to the edge of the device, and it's easy to touch as well. So fantastic. Um, in uh, going on to some of the other features, so. Um, the display is there. Uh, of course, the next uh, part I would go into is the keyboard. So, uh, of course, a lot of you uh, are excited about our devices, and we're excited about this keyboard in particular. We've made some adaptions to the keyboard. In this case, uh, you can see that the um, the keyboard pack, the keyboard overall keyboard uh, shape now it has uh, rounded edges on the bottom, which means that we are getting um, we are getting some some keys are slightly different than on the Gemini or the Cosmo. So you will see sort of rounded uh, keys on the, uh, the the cursor key on the right and the control key, but also the bottom row of the keys, uh, the uh, the up and down arrow uh, are also slightly wider. So a slight departure from um, the exact shape of the Cosmo or the um, or the or the Gemini. Uh, the keyboard, however, is a great fit. Fits snugly under the screen, so that's a fantastic, that's a fantastic thing, and we can easily move from one shape to another. Um, I'll go on to the other things. So we've, uh, we've, the processor um, is now at Dimensity 800. We originally indicated Dimensity 1000. We'll go into those issues, but we still have a super fast eight cores uh, for the CPU, four cores for the GPU, and four cores for the APU. Uh, we've increased the uh, RAM in the device. So now the RAM is eight gigabytes, originally stated at six gigabytes. So that should make a lot of people happy because I think that was in the comments that we are watching closely. That was one of the major requests of the, uh, of the campaign on the backers that we have the uh, the the RAM increased as well. Uh, the flash is, the storage is one to eight gigabytes. Uh, going on to some other parts of the specification, um, we are obviously um, 5G, and that is kind of the major thing here. So as part, as, as part of being the first device with 5G, and that is supported with two SIM slots and a micro SD card. The two SIM slots, they can work simultaneously with the micro SD. So as opposed to the Cosmo, where we couldn't use the second physical SIM slot and the SD card at the same time, we can now because the SIM tray is longer. Uh, so all three of the uh, cards can be used at the same time. Of course, we will have the eSIM as well, which um, which multiplexes with the physical slip SIM slot two. So you either get physical SIM slot two or uh, the eSIM chip. Um, I'll go on to the cameras. So uh, let's look at the back of the unit a little bit. Um, so on the back of the unit, we've got a 48 megapixel Sony sensor. So we've now confirmed a, a Sony sensor for this. Uh, which we believe will be a step up from our other devices in the past for photography. So um, the previous sensor was a, on the Cosmo was a 24 megapixel um, sensor from Samsung, which is a hexagonally oriented matrix. And uh, in this case, um, we are using a Sony sensor, which are generally regarded as the highest quality. We've also upgraded the uh, sensor on the front camera. So on the front camera, we are, um, we now have a 13 megapixel sensor from uh, originally stated uh, five megapixels. Okay, so um, that is kind of uh, uh, some of the some of the sort of highlights on the specification. I'll go into some of the interfaces as well. So um, as always with our devices, we have two USB C's. Um, and we have the obviously the headset jack as well so you can see that here the headset jack and one usb-c here and on the other side um, one usb-c there 
we have a on off button here which is essentially a, um, an on off switch as well as a fingerprint sensor on the on off button and on the other side we have a, a, a smart button and the volume buttons as well the plus and minus the volume up and volume down controls as well um, the the other thing to say there was there were some questions but i will go into that later there's also a notification light on the front for charging or notifications as well um, so uh, all in all these are kind of some of the highlights of the specification over to you chris thank you very much thank you very much janko um and as you mentioned 5g uh planet computers first 5g device and and i guess i would ask both both Yanko and, and Martin to perhaps comment on this. Um, tell us a little bit about why you think 5G is important, why now is the right time uh, for Planet Computers to bring out a 5G device, and particularly the importance of 5G to facilitating that pocket computer stroke mini computer form factor. Uh, so let me take uh, this question. Um, um, 5, 5G is now evolving as a as a main standard all across the world it's a different deployment levels um, in different places geographically but um, many countries now in uh, Europe in Japan in the US are deploying 5g networks and there are already quite a few um, 5g networks in fact today I'm talking to you on a 5g mobile internet router um, this technology is faster it enables us to have better data throughput uh, and of course it's still in it's still not fully deployed so there are these uh, models called non-sa non-standalone models where basically you have 5g operating in concert with 4g 3g 2g etc right and this is kind of how we see the device moving around one key thing for the device and for um, the evolution of our type of planet keyboard devices is that we need to have a 5G device in order to be uh, competitive on the market and also that the users of the device get that speed and the networks who are currently promoting 5G can use this device as one of those devices that they can also promote to the customers, right? So this is quite important. It's not just about, you know, the Cosmo is a great 4G device, but uh, with the 5G advent, you know, of uh, being, being deployed uh, everywhere around the world, um, it is useful in, it is of course, extremely useful as a device and a wonderful device, but um, a 5G device is something that really is now up to date with where the networks are. So that's very important. Uh, having said that, you can restrict the use of the Astro also to work on just 4G or just 3G. So there are some settings uh, which say, to, which you can say, you know, I can now just don't use 5G, just use 4G uh, radio, um, and that's all I want, right? So it's really up to you. But uh, in terms of the specification, in 2021, we really need a 5G device out there. Okay. Well, thank you for that, Yanko. Um, now, obviously, it's been, um, everybody's talked about this being an unprecedented year, uh, 2020, and, and indeed into the start of 2021. Uh, looking at uh, smart, smartphone sales, globally, sales are down, supply chains have been badly hit. Can you just take a moment, Yanko, to tell us a little bit about how the global pandemic has imp impacted Planet Computers and particularly the development of AstroSlide. Well, it's, it's been a, a year like no other, that's for sure. Uh, we started off the year um, with our Chinese partners uh, and our uh, Chinese um, staff being in, 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 in Shenzhen, actually being locked down not being able to leave their um, their uh, towns or or their homes to return back to Shenzhen uh, to continue development, and it was quite a long process until um, things kind of resumed to some level of normality. 
And I, I still don't think anywhere is really functioning completely normal. Um, following that, um, the impact kind of moved towards the UK. So, you know, we started having lockdowns uh, in April. In fact, I think the filming of the Astro campaign was the last day, last working day before the lockdown uh, in, uh, in, the, in the UK, in London. So, um, so it, was, it was really a, a, a very challenging time. And you can see that this call is also taking place uh, with, you know, a, a Zoom, a Zoom call. And uh, you know, we are, we are, we, we would typically be at CES right now, um, showing, showing uh, the device to many journalists, which of course we are doing, but it's taking place all online. And it's not the same because the journalists cannot touch the phone, cannot feel the phone, and we typically had some backers coming to the shows and typically had some backer events as well. So it's all been very different than uh, in previous years. Um, concerning the Astro project, uh, there's been several um, challenges. Um, of course, the first challenge is not being able to meet face-to-face -face with our ODM, our factory in China, um, not being to help having those face-to-face -face meetings so that we gain early on, we gain a, a very um, good common understanding about the device. Of course, uh, you know, we had many uh, calls uh, with, with our ODM um, through WeChat, video calls through Zoom, sometimes using both. Um, and those, uh, there was another challenge, which of course is the, um, the time zones, because if you wanted to have a long day long meeting it meant that somebody was staying up till four in the morning, whether it was the Chinese side or the London, the UK side, right? So we've, we've done both in fact, we had quite a few late nights where people were staying up till very late to get to get to the crux of the the issues and the design understanding that we needed to achieve. So um, you know that that kind of you know software wise, it's not so complicated because it's quite easy to you know cast a Android screen or uh, to show the UI and to do revisions on something like UI. But when it comes to hardware, mechanical parts, drawings, uh, deep understanding of assembly and, and, uh, um, and, and other issues, that was probably the main challenge so far. Um, not being able to you know, touch and feel some parts until you know, a, a very late stage is, is quite difficult. Typically, we would have probably had three, maybe three to five visits up to now to the, to, with our ODM. Maybe, maybe uh, Martin can say a few words as well about the, the sort of online virtual call, you know, uh, uh, process yeah. in the design. Well, there is a phrase called Chinese whispers and it does feel like that <laughs> at times. So, you, you know, um, it's very difficult to be um, precise, um, give precise instructions uh, when there's a language barrier and a distance barrier. It's much easier uh, when we go and visit, we, we all tend to crowd around the whiteboard and, and sketch in front of each other. And you can engage um, their engineering team in a way that you can't on a, on a, a Zoom call. So it has been very frustrating, um, but we're sort of, we're getting there. And um, it's, uh, yeah, it's been a, a longer process than we would have liked, but um, um, they're a good team. Um, they, 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 they want to achieve um, quality products and, um, you know, slowly but surely we're getting there. And, and speaking of that kind of long and, and complex process, and obviously it's an incredibly complex uh, mechanism that, that we're trying to achieve here. Um, and you're trying to do it from distance as well. There's obviously been a bit, bit of a delay in terms of now the schedule is to have the device to backers in the early part of the summer. Um, can you give us some sort of feedback on how uh, confident you are of that deadline now? Um, and, you know, was it mostly coronavirus based issues that led to the delays that we've seen so far? Um, I think, you know, there's been really um, two parts to this. Uh, so one part is getting that kind of deep understanding of the uh, 
design intent translating it into the, the mechanical engineering and into the um the final you know the final uh you know not just mechanical engineering but this kind of understanding of how the unit will also be assembled all the parts fitting together because there's one thing having a, a mechanical sample there's another thing about being able to sort of engineer something that it's ready for mass production these are these are two completely different things and um so that was definitely um you know just adding a tiny bit of delay throughout the whole process but at one point it was getting pretty uh you know maybe a bit drifting so that uh, really we had to kind of say okay guys like if we want to finish this on time then let's um let's you know we need to like really take these late nights and early mornings and 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 just work until it's finished and not leave the office right to, to lock down the design so yeah I, I had to put my foot down a few times and just say look okay like there is no more time we have to we have to go and and, and get these things right um is this another thing that um took a little bit of time was the the licensing of the 5G chipset. And I think uh, in that side, again, not being able to have face to face meetings and proper discussions also impacted the, um, the timeline of actually getting the 5G license, which would, of course, as I said, I, I would have liked and originally indicated to be the, the Dimensity 1000. So um, this again, maybe some face to face meetings. Uh, would have facilitated other things like that but um those are kind of maybe the main two things uh, however uh sorry chris just however Thanks. on that side you know i would say that those are probably the um we don't feel there's any sort of major delay there's just some slippage that probably is caused by some of this non-face-to-face -face and remote working conditions both in um both in the uk and china we are not we don't have a fully open office either mm. and uh you know but in all in all it could have been worse it's it's probably not too bad you know having a few months delay is probably not too bad in in, uh, in the way that the world is right now hopefully there's positives as well as negatives obviously everybody wants to get the device in their hands um as soon and as quickly as possible but uh it's, it's a it's a joy to have in your hand i can tell you that <laughs> I, I can also tell you from talking to the ces journalists this week that they're saying to me that there's a lot of failed hardware projects and and, and delayed hardware projects this year and i've talked to journalists from a, a lot of journalists this week about the device so actually i feel even more happier with a little delay uh, than I did before chatting to them. Okay, okay. And uh, you you mentioned about the um, media tech chipset change uh, a moment or two ago, Yanko. And you know, obviously, when you announced that earlier in the week uh, as a backer update, there was some disappointment about that decision. Can you just fill us in on, on some of the background around how and why that decision was made, please? Yeah. So, firstly, you know, there was a lot of disappointment. Uh, from the backers and I think there is still a lot of disappointment from the backers and um, I'm personally really disappointed and, and really gutted when I got that news that uh, we couldn't have the chip that we wanted to have so uh, I'll, I'll try to explain this in detail because I think it's important for everybody to know um, when we started this project we intended um, to make this really a flagship device with the flagship 5G device with, uh, with the Dimensity 1000. The Dimensity 1000 was um, announced and in our um, discussions with MediaTek was suggested as the processor to go with uh, at the beginning of this uh, process. We actually waited with them for certain other announcements to take place and when we got the green light we then announced our device with the processor all with the understanding that this will be the processor for our device um, we obviously started our campaign um, 
end of March. And when MediaTek published the news about the Astro slide in their newsletter in April, which we um, which we published in our Indiegogo update. Um, there was a number of months of delay after that when we were getting through the um, the licensing, uh, sorry, the uh, the mechanical engineering and so on. When it came to the licensing part, which typically takes place once the ODM, the factory, accepts the, the order, uh, we then started getting some negative messages first from the ODM. Then we went back through uh, MediaTek in Europe, and then yet again through MediaTek in China. And uh, the answer was basically no. Now, uh, you cannot license it, but you can license the 800. So this was quite a surprise to everybody. And you know we've made subsequent attempts to try to, to get the 1000, but everything so far has been unsuccessful. Um, and that is kind of the, um, the situation. So um, I'm personally very disappointed. And because this is something that um, I would have really liked to see the, the 1000 chip in there. But having said that, the, um, the 800 chip is, an, is a 5G processor. It's still extremely good. Yes, there are some differences in the specifications for the uh, Dimensity 1000 and the Dimensity 800. Um, the Dimensity 1000 has a better spec. It has um, uh, some cores that are faster at 2.6 gigahertz, but other cores are still 2 gigahertz. The, the Dimensity 800, all the cores are at 2 gigahertz. Um, the big differences or the significant differences are really that we are losing Wi-Fi 6 uh, and only have Wi-Fi 5 to T2R. Um, and we don't have Bluetooth or VLE audio. Right, so that's uh, not in the uh, not in the 800. What we're gaining with the 800 is the 5G power save. So uh, we will get more uh, more out of uh, our battery, and I'm, I will go into the battery discussion later. Uh, but um, those are kind of the main differences. Apart from that, um, it's dual the the 1000, the Dimensity 1000 is a dual 5G modem, whereas the um, Dimensity 800 is a 5G modem, but it's 5G plus 4G. So this is the other difference. Now, that might affect a few people, but probably not many. Single channel, single SIM, download uh, speeds are still 2.39 gigahertz uh, on the 800, which I think it will be interesting to see if anybody, any network can actually match. Um, so I think we'll still get a very good, um, a very good performance, um, and uh, um, out of out of the the cores because we have eight CPU cores, we have four GPU cores, we have four APU cores. It's still a it's still a fantastic processor. It's still a huge step up from um, the, the the Cosmo um, in terms of uh, power. So um, that's probably what I can say on the processor. Um, if we make any further attempts, I've tried to reach MediaTek over the past few days, given the reaction. I still haven't had any feedback, um, probably because the virtual CS is going on, but I hope that uh, we, we can probably uh, make some more attempts if we can swap the license for something else. But as it stands, uh, we are going, and if there are no changes, we are going with the Dimensity 800. Okay, thank you, Yanko, for being clear on, on those points. Now, moving on to a perhaps more positive subject, software and apps have always been a big part of the Planet Computers story. Um, is there anything you can tell us, or can you give us any sneak previews uh, of the future in that direction? Um, for example, I know you were looking at the backup app when you were fundraising for Astro Slide. Anything you can tell us in that direction? Yes, so um, there, there are two real, two real things. Um, the, the key thing is that you know this device is our first device which is both in landscape and in portrait. Right? So, um, so basically, the, the um, 
the main thing with our applications is that uh, we are redesigning a number of applications to be able to uh, operate optimally on portrait. They've been operating optimally on, on landscape, but now we want them to also be um, highly usable on, on, the, on the portrait uh, orientation, right? When the device is closed and you're using it with one hand. So um, in that sense, um, we're trying to have this mantra of like the best of both worlds. So we want to maximize the user, user experience on when the device is closed and we're in portrait mode. And we also want to maximize the experience in when the device is open in landscape mode on the table or you're holding it in with two hands, right? So in that sense, um, we are uh, redesigning some features. We also want to add some features to the desktop. Some of them will be a surprise and some of them um, I can talk about a little bit. So things like uh, having some quick access icons on portrait that will um, that will be different potentially from the icons on the quick access icons on landscape. For example, if you if you got a phone on portrait, maybe you want something like an Uber app to be um, a quickly accessible. But um, if you're on landscape, you don't necessarily need an Uber app to, to do that. You might want to have notes or uh, airmail or some other uh, app that when you will be writing or Excel for editing spreadsheets. So uh, again, maximizing on this kind of best of both worlds mantra, saying, look, let's have the best usability in or on the portrait orientation and in the landscape orientation. Uh, you also mentioned the backup. So uh, we have been working on the backup software and primarily uh, we have been uh, looking at making backup usable on the uh, on the Astro and of course the Cosmos, so some of the some of our users can also backup data and restore, but as well as that, just backup and restore from one of the devices. Uh, and the way we do that is through um, three different ways, which avoid using the uh, standard uh, cloud providers for your backup. So this is to do with privacy. And there are three ways you can be able to do the backup. One is onto an SD card. Uh, a second is that you'll be able to uh, backup um, onto a network disk, so using the Samba protocol. And the third is that you'll be able to backup you on an internet server like, uh, like a Linux server using um, SSH and SCP. So these are all integrated um, pretty seamlessly into the backup application. As well as the three different destinations, uh, card, network disk, internet server, uh, you'll be able to uh, encrypt your data or keep it uh, unencrypted. You'll be able to store it as one big archive file or keep it in a folder. So for example, if you want to store photos on your internet server or your network disk, you could um, you could back them up into a folder unencrypted, so you have access to those to those photos pictures. Alternatively, if you wanted to store them in an encrypted way, you could do that. So uh, we think it's uh, it's an interesting app. Um, and we've been also working on the user experience for that app, as you can see from the from the video. I hope you like the design of it, and I hope it works well for you. Yeah, I mean, we we look forward to uh, to testing it out. Now, Davide, you've been sat incredibly patiently, but I'm I, I'm going to come to you now, if I may. Um, obviously, Linux has always been um, a very central part of the Planet Computer's story and strategy. Um, can you give us a quick update in terms of progress there, uh, particularly in terms of what we might expect when AstroSide ships to its backers? Yes, so uh, at Planet Computers, we uh, really believe in the importance of open source in general and in Linux in particular. Uh, so for this reason, uh, we maintain a GitHub repository where we share the source code for both the kernel and for the bootloader of uh, all our devices. Uh, we started from our first device, the Gemini, <clears throat> and uh, we created a multi-boot uh, um, option for it, 
so that it will allow you to not only have Android, but also to install um, basically Linux, so a different operating system. And uh, we released for the Gemini uh, uh, Debian Linux and uh, uh, Kali Linux. And in addition to that, we also release uh, Sailfish in two different versions, so a community edition open source. And we also release a more uh, official version in collaboration with Yola. Uh, for our second device, the Cosmo Communicator, uh, we released the um, Debian Linux again. And we are currently, as we speak, working at the uh, Ubuntu Touch version, uh, which is uh, slightly different because um, while the Linux, uh, the Debian Linux distribution, it's basically a sort of server-oriented, uh, desktop-oriented distribution. Ubuntu Touch is really designed uh, for mobile devices. So um, behind the scene, we are working on that at the moment, and hopefully uh, we'll have more news for you uh, in the coming weeks. And uh, we are uh, proceeding in the same way for the Astro. So typically, um, what we do is as soon as we have a prototype unit, that is basically uh, mechanically and, and especially from the hardware point of view extremely similar to the final device. Uh, we usually ship a few, a few of these prototypes units uh, to some key open source members so they can start working on the Linux version before actually the device reaches uh, our, our backers. And that's what we'll continue to do. Um, for the launch date, we are only focusing on the Android uh, release, but of course we'll work at the multi-boot options so to allow all our users to have uh, different operating systems and as soon as they are ready uh, we will publish them um, so allowing effectively the users to, to have different uh, different operating systems. Now in addition to that we are also experimenting with um, a different way which will be having Linux on top of Android uh, sort of such like an application, an Android application, which basically provides you with Linux functionalities. This has pro and cons uh, with regard to a full Linux distribution, but uh, we believe it might be very interesting. So uh, we are experimenting this, uh, uh, this further way to provide Linux to our customers. That's very interesting. Thank you very much, David. I, and just uh, touching on Android, and you mentioned that that's going to be the priority um, at launch for Astro Slide, uh, although appreciate all the hard work that's going into um, Linux as well. You know, one of one of the things that people have been hungry for in the past is is obviously Android updates. Um, I know it's quite a challenging area, one which uh, is not 100% in your uh, own control. Um, but can you just give us a little bit of an update on the uh, strategy for updating Android on the Astro Slide? Yes, we basically agreed with the ODM to have about four major um, releases, so four major updates uh, during the year. And this will be uh, typically updates where security patches are put in, so they will need to be recertified. And then we can have uh, further updates for, uh, let's say, bug fixes or um, incremental changes. Lovely, thank you very much. Uh, Chris, something... just to mention, um... Uh, to our backers, so uh, we are launching with Android 11. So originally stated it was 10, but we are launching with Android 11. It's, so we're very happy about that. It's a very important Actually, point I to make. I can tell you on the you. unit very quickly. Uh, just uh, some shots of Android 11. So let me just go to the right place. So I don't know if you can see that on the screen, but um, Android 11. Yep. Android Lovely. Know. There we go. Lovely. Okay. Just a, just a couple of questions left as we uh, as we start to think about wrapping um, this session today, um, and they're, they're kind of questions that have come uh, from some of the backers in the last uh, few days or week or so. Obviously, one of the uh, one of the big questions has been around um, battery size, and and Yanko, you mentioned earlier that you were going to uh, touch on this again. Um, there's obviously got the, the battery 5G battery saving technology that comes with the Dimensity 800 chip. Can you just elaborate on that a little bit and tell us what we might expect there? Yes, uh, thanks Chris. So, so we'll, we'll go into the, the, the battery side. I think, um, so there's, a, there's quite a lot there. So we'll, we'll, um, I'll try to explain 
um, the basic rationale of what we did, what we can still do. Um, as you know, the key uniqueness of this device, it's not if it has, you know, 2.4 or 2.5 gigabytes download speed. Um, it's not whether it's really the fastest or nearly the fastest. Um, I think the key parts are that we have 5G um, and that it has the keyboard, but the, really the key part is the form factor, that it's this unique um, transformer device between a normal mobile phone and a pocket computer PDA. Uh, for this to work, and Martin's here on the call as well, um, we had to make sure that it can feel like a mobile phone and that it doesn't feel too bulky, right? So some of the nice things about this device is if you look at it compared to the um, compared to the Cosmo, and I'll put both of them up here, uh, it's slightly it's slightly uh, less wide, okay? It's slightly, the width is slightly smaller. So if I put it on top of the, the Astro, it's just slightly, um, it's slightly less wide, okay? And, and that's a nice thing because it actually feels really well to hold in the hand. So, you know, all these factors go together. At the moment, the battery in the current chassis uh, goes to 3.5 um, 3, 3 milliamp hours. It's a lithium polymer battery. Um, it should do very well on the unit, but it will. it's basically sitting between the, the two hinges, which you can see see here the two hinges uh, the two rails which are which are which allow the device to slide open and close okay uh, you can see um, the battery basically sits in this part now i'm going to uh, so basically within this shape what we did is we tried to make the device also as thin as possible to make it usable as a mobile phone right not just a pocket computer and you can see there are these legs uh, protrusions for the two rails. Of course, it sits very stably on the table. There were some questions about does it sit stable on the table? Yes, it does. It's very stable on the table and it's very stable when the lid is open as well, just so you know, it's very stable um, when, when you're just typing and holding the device in your hand. But uh, really, this part between the two, uh, the, the, between the two uh, rails is still open for discussion. So we could we could increase that space and fill out that space and have a bigger battery. It would not be as pleasant to hold, okay? It will be less pleasant, a little bit less pleasant to hold. Um, it will be slightly bulkier, slightly thicker on this middle part of the device. I'd like uh, Sebastian, device Sebastian, to maybe show the, the CAD on this a little bit so you can see what I'm talking about. Okay, so here you can see the actual, uh, some of the CAD files of the device. And you can see this area between the, um, the, two, um, the two mechanisms, that the sliding mechanisms on each side of the battery, right? So the battery at the moment, as it stands with this design, um, gets us to three and a half milliamp hours, right? Now, if, I don't know if you can put the device into a profile so we can see the, um, Sebastian, yeah. Well, you see, you can see this profile, and actually, what we what we can do is we could do is basically to try to fill out a little bit of that gap to make it up to four thousand. Um, as I said, um, you know, this is something that we could potentially do, and to fill that gap a little bit and make the battery to around four thousand. Now we've we've actually gone back since your comments um, in the last few days. We've gone back to our battery supplier and we've asked the question um, what to what point we could get. We could certainly get up to 4,000. But you have to trade that off. And I re I'm seriously saying that you have to trade that off to, you know, how easy is it will be, how comfortable it will be to hold it as your normal phone. Because we really want this device to be your daily driver, right? So. Um, it's important that it can do that. Now, 
if I'm looking at it from a sort of very pragmatic standpoint, Dimensity 1000 and 4000 milliamp hour battery is probably going to be the same total time and same standby time as Dimensity 800 with the power save technology and the three and a half thousand milliamp hour battery. What we can do is fill out that gap uh, on, the, on the base of the um, Astro and make it, uh, as I said, make that um, battery slightly bigger to get it to 4,000 milliamp hours. We can do that. As I said, the trade off is more in the aesthetic and in the comfort. Okay, so really those are the main things. And I'll, I'll show you some uh, models that we've done actually. We, we have gone through this task of doing that. So you can see here, let's say 3D printed base where the whole of the base is filled in. I don't know if you can see it very well, but the whole base is filled in as opposed to this base where the, um, the protrusions are, are different, okay? So I'm just showing you that, you know, we've done these studies. It's not something that we said, oh, there's a little bit of space that so will put the battery of any, of any kind. It's not at all like that. It's exactly the opposite. We try to maximize the overall benefit of the device. So um, very happy um, to potentially run a poll, um, uh, which we can publish um, during this event. And maybe we can have a vote from the, from the backers on what they would like to see. I'm sure not everybody's views is the same. Uh, I know that the most vocal um, uh, feedback was about the battery, and we quite understand that. However, I do think that potentially we're still in a very good space with the three and a half thousand million power battery. And we have the room to change it to 4,000 million powers. So there is that, there is that possibility. And uh, I would like to put it to some kind of poll of the uh, backers. I think it's probably appropriate given the, um, the feedback that we received about it over the last few days. Just to mention, we are confident that the current battery size will last a whole day uh, under normal use. So uh, we believe that the combination Dimensity 800 with PowerSafe and, uh, and the three and a half thousand lithium polymer battery will last us a whole day of use. Thanks very much for filling us in there. Obviously it's a series of trade-offs in all of these cases, which uh, you've explained very clearly. So we've just got one final question um, in this part of the session, and that's based around uh, LTE band 13. Um, there's been some questions about not having LTE band 13 in the final specification of the Astro Slide device. Um, can, you, can, you, can you elaborate a little bit more on that one finally? Uh, yes, so um, the, the, the current a band list for 4G LTE does not include BAD13, okay? Um, now, um, it's a very similar issue as is with, as was with the Cosmo. The fact that the band, 70, about band 71 and band 13 uh, clash because they are harmonics of each other. Uh, and essentially, um, we for the for the main version of the Astro, we've decided that there is no uh, band 13, like there was no band 13 in the um, in the Cosmo. Um, then at a, at a later stage, we actually introduced the, um, the what we call the Cosmo Verizon Edition, which did not have band 71 and had band 13. However, there is another complication with um, with this, um, with 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 the fact that we are five, we're going to the five G era, right? So in the four G era, it was fine. You had band thirteen. What I understand from Verizon is that there'll be some reallocation of the spectrum, and I really want to make sure that um, if we commit to a Verizon edition board, that it's actually going to make any material difference because I know that they're also reallocating the spectrum particularly in that um, 700 megahertz band, uh, sorry, 600 megahertz band. And uh, we, we want to make sure that 
we're not going to put band 13 and then it's unusable because that band will switch over to 5G, right? Now also Verizon is using some um, uh, uh, millimeter wave um, 5G, which none of the chipsets that we're talking about, nor the Dimensity 1000 nor 800 are actually utilizing, so can support in any way, right? So we want to make sure that what we provide for Verizon could be good for 4G and that it's actually going to be long term, you know, a long term proof, right? So until we get that data, and I am talking with Roland Dunn, who's the president, um, you know, um, um, uh, he, he used to run O2 um, in the UK and I happen to know him. So um, we are talking directly to the top to, to see what we can do and what the best solution is about that. Okay, super. Thank you for that. And I think um, in the last hour or so, you will have addressed many of the questions that um, people have been asking um, and that indeed you've encouraged them to ask in the last few days. Um, I think I need to just conclude by thanking all of you, Yanko, Davide, Martin and Seb, um, for your time today and for all contributing to uh, a stimulating and interesting discussion around Astro Slide. Um, both in terms of the specification, the timescales, the first look, et cetera, et cetera. And most importantly, thanks to everyone who's watching for taking the time to watch this broadcast today. We always welcome your feedback, so please feel free to get in touch either via Twitter at PlanetCom2017 or on our Planet Computers Facebook page. And now, please stay tuned for the Astro Slide backers Q and A, which will be coming up shortly. Thank you. Thank you. Bye bye. Thank bye -bye. you. Bye.